Um, so we'll move right along to reptiles. Why wouldn't we? Yeah. So you know we're just gonna go through all these different groups pretty quickly. Um, so reptiles are um, animals. They're, yeah, they're animals. <laughs> Bottom chordata. Uh, <laughs> you learn something new every day. I thought they were mushrooms. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, we got a few examples of reptiles there on the side. Now, we have a few different groups of reptiles. We separate them into four different classification groups. Ooh, Hi. Guest speaker. Hello, Ms. Johnson. Guest Hello. printer. <laughs> um, so, anyway, we split them into snakes and lizards in one category. Then we have turtles and tortoises, alligators and crocodiles. And we have what are called tuataras, yeah, which are kind of cool. The ancient fossil. Yep. So uh, the basic traits of reptiles, they live completely on land. They go through internal fertilization. So the eggs are inside the mother when fertilized. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering what we meant on the last, what we talked about last time. Uh, they breathe with lungs at all stages of life. And they have what's called an amniotic egg that they lay on land. Um, now we're going to go into amniotic eggs a little because you see this with the rest of the animal kingdom from here on out. Like if it was a cladogram, amniotic egg would be a derived character of everything a from rep, here on yeah, out. Yeah, reptile, bird, bird and, and mammal. mammal. Yep. So amniotic eggs will have a tough outer shell that has little holes in it so oxygen and carbon can go in, carbon dioxide can leave, and it contains food and water for the embryo. So think of if you crack an egg, you have the yolk. Mm -hmm. The yolk is a sort of storage of nutrients for the embryo. Yeah. Yolk? Yolk. I'm pretty sure it's a silent L. Yolk. Whatever. Yolk. I don't care. No. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I started smiling. <laughs> yeah. Just keep making fun of me. Uh, so reptiles, uh, some things that reptiles have adapted in order to live effectively. They actually have scales and they uh, sort of, they, they're really strong. They can act kind of like armor. Yeah. Not like you though. You're pretty weak. They, uh, so they can protect them. Also, it minimizes water loss by the reptile because the thing is, a lot of these reptiles live in really dry areas. Yeah, like our amphibians need the water. These yeah. guys, they need it, don't get me wrong. but Yeah, they need less. But that said, if they're living in really dry environments, water tends to evaporate very quickly off their body. So the scales help keep the water there. Um, they also usually have toes with claws. It's useful for it, like a lot of them are predators. They and help so them catch things. Now, do frogs have claws or no? They do not. They have like pads on there. Okay, because. All right, for the wet water, of course. Yeah. yeah. So reptiles also have a three chambered heart, but you'll notice they have a septum, which separates the ventricle into two little spots. Um, it's almost like a pre four chambered heart. Yeah, it is. You're right. Um, and then, so reptiles are ectothermic. Um, so once again, another again. ectothermic. They're still cold-blooded. Cold uh, and it's regulated by, so that means temperature is regulated by their environment. And this actually affects their activity. So I have this cool graph here of an iguana. You'll notice that in the peak hours of the day, since it gets really hot out, they need to not move so much because the it's environment over. dictates yeah. their body temperature. Therefore, if they start moving when it's hot I'm out, running. their body temperature is going to spike. So <laughs> like burn to death yeah. on the inside? <laughs> I mean, you don't want to burn to death, but just overheat. It's not good to have too high a body temperature, right? I will know. Like having a fever is bad for you. That's good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, in order to keep their body temperature relatively level, they just kind of bask in the shade during the hottest days of the um, hottest times of the day. What, what is that graph missing? It is missing a title. Yeah, it's <laughs> bothering me. Please get it off the screen. Thank you. All right, so really quickly, uh, Turtle, turtles, turtle. tortoises, those are some reptiles. I like turtles. Uh, did you know actually alligators are technically a type of crocodile? I did not know that. Mm -hmm. They're cool. Crocodile is a very large clade, and alligators are part of that. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Um, so snakes and lizards are another group. And then here's the tuatara. You know more about tuataras than I do. The tuatara and is a very, very rare lizard. It only lives in New Zealand, which is, again near australia which is where all the weirdo animals live um it has a vestigial <laughs> weirdo eye. animals it has a vestigial eye on its like head it's like ooh, what is it and it's like it's got like an eyelid but there's nothing there anymore and they eat only this cricket which is like i don't know this big and they eat like one every or they eat like two a year yeah. so they eat the cricket one day and then they just sit there for about six months so they're like super super adapted to their environment mm -hmm. and therefore it's probably a bad thing if their environment changes oh yeah they'd be gone they're, in an they're, instant they're endangered species right yeah so yeah uh, all right so now we've already talked in my class about how birds are thought to have evolved from reptiles so it's only natural that we go from birds yeah. to, or from reptiles hey, to birds did you hear they're making jurassic park 40 really yeah, it's just gonna be 
a bunch of birds flying around. No, I got nothing. <laughs> okay. The same thing. So, some quick features about birds. They have feathers and a lot of No, fly. no, <laughs> don't listen to them. Never heard of that. Um, they also lay amniotic no, eggs. No, no, they don't. <laughs> birds don't have eggs. All right, stop. So anyway, here, here's the difference, though, between bird eggs and reptile eggs. Reptile eggs have, like, a leathery shell to them, whereas birds have that more fragile, delicate shell. I'm, like, doing this like I'm cracking an egg out of bowl. Like I'm milking. So they have that delicate eggshell, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Whereas Your head looks are, like a bird egg. Stop it. You uh, told me to insult you for the rest of the thing. <laughs> no, I told you not to. So mm, birds... We can review the tape. <laughs> birds have a very lightweight skeleton. It's very hollow. And why is this advantageous to birds, you think? Because they have eggs. But there's nothing to do with the eggs. Oh, man. <laughs> this is hard. Because they fly. Yeah. And in order to fly, it's good to be egg laying. Oh, no. It's good to have, <laughs> be light. It's yes. good to be light. Yep. Very good. It was a journey, but we got it. Yeah, there. yeah. That bio degree is paying off right now. <laughs> uh, birds also, the egg is inside the mother when it's fertilized. Um, now, birds are endothermic, Finally. so they they can regulate their bi- Actually, own body temperature. And they're, they're very warm-blooded, if mm. you want to use the, the layman's terms. Like, your normal temperature is at 98.6. Birds, their metabolism is, like, ridiculously high. Yeah, because they're flying all they're the time. They're flying all the time. They have to eat way more compared yeah. to their body weight, generally, than we yeah, do. And it's Especially, like, hummingbirds. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. If it's like, if you ever heard, like, you eat like a bird, it means, like, yo, you pick it, your food. If you really ate like a bird, you would just, like, eat everything in the cafeteria <laughs> yeah. every day. You'd be like, yeah. Rah, rah. Yeah. <laughs> Like Mr. Card's dad. Yeah, yeah, I eat too much. So birds uh, breathe with lungs at all stages of their life. And actually, oh, I thought that was the next slide. But anyway, birds have a four-chambered heart. Um, so they have that septum that was in reptiles between, um, actually crocodiles have a four-chambered yeah. heart. I should have more, said that. More evidence of yeah. possible evolution. Yeah, so crocodiles had a four-chambered heart. So some reptiles have that four-chambered. Mm-hmm. And it's thought that birds descended from whatever that common descendant of dinosaurs mm-hmm. and crocodiles were. So that's why birds have a four-chambered heart as well. Um, so they have a septum that's the, mus- the muscle section that totally divides the heart at the bottom into the s- ventricles and the septum. Mm-hmm. Ventricles. Totally separate. Yep. But, uh, so birds actually have little air sacs in their lungs, and this actually makes the lungs larger, so it actually makes them a little lighter, but it also allows them to get energy, fa- oxygen faster. Because if you remember correctly, the way that organism or that heterotrophs get energy is that oxygen mm-hmm. reacts with the glucose and they break it down to release energy. ATP. So they need a lot of oxygen very fast. So it's very mm-hmm. beneficial that they can get oxygen faster. Mm-hmm. Um, as we said, they have warm hollow bones. Uh, the warm bloodness actually allows them to keep their metabolism <clears throat> levels high. That four chambered heart is super efficient, so it keeps oxygen levels high and they have increased lung capacity. This also helps them. This All this stuff together helps them fly really effectively. Now on to our last group, the mammals. Mr. Black added that one in the bird, the bear shaking its. Well, it's inappropriate. I feel like Charmin should pay you five bucks or something. <laughs> I think it's the other way around. Um, so anyway, the way mammals get their name, it's not because they have fur that Mm-mm. defines a mammal. What defines a mammal is that they produce milk in mammary glands. And in, and I don't like to think about it, but who gives you the milk? Is it your mama or your dada? <laughs> the mom. Yep. Where do you think the word mama came from? Oh, yeah, from? the memory glands. Very nice. Never even thought of that. The, I don't either. This is why I had you along. Um, so anyway, yeah, what defines a mammal is those mammary glands. Yes, most mammals do have fur, but the mammary glands <laughs> are the key. Not this mammal. <laughs> uh, anyway, so <laughs> endothermic. It, uh, the, so mammals are endothermic, as you probably know. You regulate your body temperature. Um, or your body regulates its own temperature. You don't have to go lay in the shade when it, you sometimes do. Yeah, it's just Because nice. there, there are limits. I mean, yeah. um, your body can only work so hard. Like, if you've run for a while, your body temperature gets really high. Um, but for the most part, your body is always regulating that body right. temperature. That's what makes you endothermic. 98.6. And day in, day out. Well, that's humans, right? Is that most mammals? It's Not us. actually sure. I think it's us. So mammals also, it's a general trend that they provide intense care for their young, unlike most of the rest of the chordates. And the cats in the cradle <laughs> with a silver spoon. Alright, um, so mammals have a highly developed brain and a nervous system. Um, they have a closed circulatory system with a four-chambered heart. Um, 
actually all the chordates have a closed circulatory system. Yeah. I don't know why I brought up the closed part just now. Um, and we talked about that word septum already in the, uh, when talking about birds, but septum is a muscle that divides the ventricles mm -hmm. um, so that you can keep oxygen-rich blood and oxygen-poor blood mm -hmm. apart. So the septum is the muscle that is right there. Yeah, big old septum right there. Yep. So mammals have a respiratory system. Mainly they use lungs. And there's usually a diaphragm underneath the lungs that help con that contracts and expands in order to facilitate breathing. And if you have the hiccups, it's because your diaphragm is having a spasm. Hiccup, um, hiccup, hiccup. Yep, hiccup. it pushes air out. Um, and there, the diaphragm is that muscle that's on the bottom of that picture. Um, so this will answer a few student questions right away, I think, because some people get confused about why are there so many different ways mammals reproduce? Well, first of all, we actually classify mammals according to... This is a common trend that we've said all mm -hmm. like throughout this entire unit. We tend to classify organisms based on how they reproduce. Well, here we go. So you have the group called the monotremes, and like the echidna, spiny anteater, mm -hmm. and the platypus, and they actually lay eggs, and their young hatch from reptile-like eggs. Now, it's thought that mammals actually evolved from reptiles. Yeah, a different so, type <clears> of... Uh ancestor that the birds came from, yep. right? Yeah. yeah, so birds and mammals actually evolved from different reptile ancestors. The Field yeah. Museum has a really cool it like, does. exhibit where they're the therapsids and mm -hmm. synapsids. It's very cool. I have yeah. a cool PowerPoint, too, that we'll show in Ooh. class. But yeah, I would recommend that exhibit at the Field Museum, by the way. But So the these probably have the most similarity to the original mammals mm -hmm. um, because reptiles laid eggs and they haven't changed quite as much in that regard. The, the uh, platypus is the only poisonous mammal. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, you how know, are they how poisonous some, again? some lizards are poisonous. They're poisonous not in their mouths, but on their back right foot. They have a little extra, like, nail or spike, and it's thought that the males stab each other for huh. mating. Cool. They poison each other with right foot kicks. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. So, marsupials are um, pouched mammals, mm -hmm. and what's important for those pouch is that they actually. Um, so, what happens is the young are actually born really, really, really yeah. early. And they're still really embryos. They're not fully yeah. uh, uh, grown. It's like preemie, but mm -hmm. real, real preemie. Yeah, and they attach to the nipple inside the pouch, and the pouch kind of protects it as it feeds on the nipple, and it continues to develop for a long time in that pouch. Like, what continent do you find most marsupials on? As mentioned in the other point, weird land, Australia. Australia, <laughs> yep. So we're, we're lucky the only one that's not Australian is the possum, and we can see them around here, right? Yep, I possum, yeah. Most marsupials live in Australia, um, and we st we have possums here, though, that are marsupials. It's actually thought that the marsupial migrated all the way to Australia before Pangea broke up. Oh, uh, not oh. the possum, but a co the common yeah, marsupial. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we have possums here, mm -hmm. and all the other marsupials are over there. <laughs> um, but anyway, Best now placental last. mammals, this is what we fall into. Placental, Most mammals fall so into. So the placenta is a special structure inside um, the womb that provides nutrition for the embryo mm -hmm. okay and uh it's formed from the tissue in the uterus as well as from membranes that surround the embryo and th it facilitates exchange of nutrients as well as oxygen and carbon dioxide between the mother and the baby so when the baby exhales carbon dioxide it goes to the placenta and then the mom's able to breathe it out breathe through it out. her yep. mouth yep yep so and this is actually most mammals do reproduce this way so you are a placental mammal this line's a placental mammal um, and generally, more than any of the rest of the mammals, the placental mammals are the most developed when they're born. Mm -hmm. So, and that is actually it. Woo! We got through that pretty fast. Bro out. Very nice. Bro. Yeah, thank you for helping me, Mr. Lincioni. You're not welcome. All right. Have a great day!